morning everyone uh, today we are going to discuss about maize crop one of the important cereal crop after uh, rice and wheat first introduction maize scientific name is gia maize and uh, chromosome number is uh, 2n equal to 20 20 and maize belongs to family poaceae and origin is in mexico and the area in india it is being cultivated in uh, 9.47 million hectares and production is uh, 28.08 metric tons million tons and productivity is 3032 kg per hectare that means around uh, 3 tons per hectare and among all the states of india karnataka is the highest producer of maize followed by maharashtra followed by madhya pradesh one more important thing is maize maize is a non tiller plant it doesn't produces any tillers like rice and wheat and it is a c4 short day plant and maize is, is also called as a miracle crop it has very high yield potential in the cereals and no cereal on this earth has yield potential as high as maize which is why it is called as queen of cereals and the average yield of maize in karif season is around 4 to 6 tons per hectare and in rabi it is 6 to 8 tons per hectare here you see compared to karif maize uh, rabi maize is a highest yielder <coughs> one more thing is if crop it is uh, being grown in both karif and rabi seasons generally in rabi season it will produce high yield because in karif season entirely crop depends upon rainfall for moisture in india uh, because of our climatic conditions rainfall is very unpredictable and un, uh, uncertain and sometimes uh, it may happen high rainfall which leads to inc- incidents of pests and disease also but in rabi only irrigated crops will be grown they are being grown with the help of irrigation that's why in rabi crops will produce high yield but it is specific to certain crops only means crops like uh, maize sunflower which can which can be grown in karif and rabi but uh, you see some crops like wheat mustard chickpea only they can be cultivated in cool season that means rabi season rice peas and pea cotton they can be cultivated in most probably in karif <clears throat> so it is this uh, rabi crops will produce high yield compared to karif season it is uh, specific to some crops which are being cultivated in all the seasons not for some season specific crops and maize grain it is a good field for poultry piggery and other animals also in nutrition it uh, maize ranks below wheat and sorghum but considerably above rice in nutrition so among all these cereals wheat is high in re- uh, nutrition followed by sorghum followed by maize and last one is rice and this maize grain it contains 10% is protein 4% is oil and 70% is carbohydrate and maize protein it is called as gene it is deficient in tryptophan and lysine both are essential amino acids and this maize is also having significant quantities of vitamin a nicotinic acid riboflavin and vitamin e and this one is low in calcium and high in phosphorus here we can see the classification of maize this classification is given by scientist kips in the year 1959 it is given based on characteristics of kernel kernel is uh, nothing but maize grain first one is flint corn scientific name is gia maize indurata this one consists of starchy endosperm enclosed with hard hammy endosperm that means in the grain inside starchy endosperm is present which is somehow soft it is surrounded by hard endosperm and this kernel size is very large with flat bottom and uh, round at the top and uh, this flint corn also consists of high proportion of starch this color may be white or yellow this flint corn most probably it is grown in india and it matures early and germination is better in cold and wet soils one more thing is this flint corn it is surrounded surrounded by hard starch hard endosperm that's why 
doesn't absorb any kind of moisture inside this one <clears throat> next one is dent cone scientific name is dma is indentata dent means it is having depression on the top top side that's why it is called as dent cone because of formation of dent on the top of kernel it is called as dent cone most probably it is in white or yellow color and this maize kernel is also having both soft and hard structures this hard starch it extends on the both sides and this soft starch it is present in the center and it extends to the top of kernel also so you see suppose grain is there it is round in shape on both right side and left side hard starch is present but in the center the soft starch is present and mainly this dent is forming because drying and shrinkage of soft starch this drying and shrinkage it leads to formation of depression on the top side that's why this dent is being formed and this dent corn it is most probably widely grown in us here and it is used for livestock feeding next one is popcorn gm is everta we all know it is a popular snack item and this kernel size is small and this one hard and corneous endosperm is present when they are heated this popcorn mainly it is having moisture inside when we heat that popcorn that moisture it converts into steam that steam it builds the pressure inside the kernel and it leads to the explosion of this maize grain that's why this grain is turned inside out popcorn for making popcorn uh, we shall heat this grain up to the 170 degrees centigrade next one is sweet corn uh, gm is saccharide about 20 percentage of this uh, grain is sugar and it is a good source of vitamin a and c it should be harvested about 70 uh, percent is moisture yellow is a predominant color for sweet corn and it is a good source of energy <clears throat> next one is floor corn gm is ml asia it resembles to the flint corn in appearance and ear characteristics this floor corn these grains are also composed of soft starch they don't have uh, dent or they have little dent it is widely grown in USA and South Africa. Next one is pot corn. GM is tunicata. It is a primitive type of corn. Among all, all these types, it is a primitive. That means wild type. Each kernel, it is enclosed in a pot or husk in a ear. Husk means, uh, you know, even paddy and uh, wheat also surrounded by husk. Upper uh, layer of that uh, grain is called as husk. And this is enclosed, it is present in a ear. Even a ear also, it is enclosed in husk. You see, if you see maize cob, it is surrounded by some husk, means leaf type, leaf type structure that is called as husk. And next one is waxy corn. GM is serratina. This kernel looks to have waxy appearance, gummy starch in them. This waxy corn is having high amount of amylopectin compared to all types of this corn. Normally in other maize, 70 percent is amylopectin is present, but in waxy corn, around 100 percent is amylopectin is present. And the starch is similar to that of tapioca starch. It is uh, tapioca starch. It is used for making adhesive. Adhesive. Tapioca starch means it is uh, prepared from the roots of cassava plant, and it is used for uh, preparing few snack items also. Next one is root system. We all know that wheat consists of two types of roots, uh, temporary seminal roots and permanent adventitious roots. But in maize crop, three types of root system are present. Three types of roots are present. Temporary seminal roots, permanent adventitious roots, and proper base roots. First one is seminal roots. We know the seminal roots are temporary. They are present in the ungerminated seed. 
and they remain functional during the initial phase of crop that means during seedling seedling phase they give support to the that seedling and they are important during early seedling development but frequently decays after development of adventitious root system so at the initial stage of crop the seminal roots will be present and they give support to the seedling but after the formation of adventitious root system they decays next one is adventitious roots these adventitious roots are permanent roots they are shoot bone roots that originate at the nodes on the lower portion of seedling that means here you see they are formed from the basal nodes of the stem below the soil level and they originate from the nodes and from below ground portion of the stem next one is prop roots uh, here we can see the difference between these adventitious roots and prop roots is these adventitious roots they are formed on basal nodes of the stem below the soil level these are formed on basal nodes of stem above the soil level so adventitious roots are not visible because they are present in the underground but prop roots we can see at the base of maize crop uh, thin roots they are they are formed mainly to give support to the maize crop these are called as prop roots they are also called as brace roots they are shoot bone roots that are formed at the nodes and portion of the stem above the soil level that means prop roots are brace roots they are visible <coughs> main use is main function is they keep the plant upright and prevents the uh, maize crop from lodging lodging means just uh, bending down one side either to right side or left side <coughs> because of weight of the terminal panicle or because of heavy winds so these prop roots they form uh, they forms at the base of the stem and they give support to the maize crop and uh, protects the crop from lodging <coughs> next one is stem stem is made up of approximately 12 to 18 nodes and internodes it is completely filled with pith in rice crop the stem it is hollow hollow means uh, nothing is present inside that stem but here it is filled with pith and number of internodes they may vary but on average there are 14 internodes in each plant leaves of maize they develop alternately on opposite sides of the stem each leaf you know each cereal leaf it consists of leaf uh, blade and leaf sheath leaf sheath this leaf consists of thin flat and expanded leaf blade with a definite midrib and smaller veins and thicker more rigid sheath compared to leaf blade uh, sheath will be more rigid and more strong the sheath generally it surrounds the internode above the node which it is attached so if you see the maize plant that the leaf sheath is there generally it surrounds the stem only after that from that sheath leaf blade will form leaf sheath somehow it is thick and strong and leaf blade it is thin and number of leaves in each maize plant may vary from 12 to 20 and stomata it is present on both surface of leaf on upper side and lower side one more important characteristic is maize leaves they produce the wax wax plays important role in dry lands means uh, <clears throat> if irrigate if a very less amount of moisture is present in the, present in the soil or high temperatures are present this wax it uh, reduces the transpiration and uh, it conserves the water inside the leaves so that the uh, plant can survive here we can see in maize uh, basal leaf first leaf is called as l1 and upper leaves uh, they are called as l2 l3 l4 this l4 leaf four was entirely covered with wax in maize crop next time when you go to maize field once you observe this l4 it was uh, it is entirely covered with wax and l8 l8 means leaf 8 it is entirely waxless maize it is a monoecious plant that means both female and male inflorescences are present on the same plant only female inflorescence it is called as silk 
it is formed around 62 days after sowing mere inflorescence it is called as tassel tassel it is formed after 55 days after sowing this tassel is nothing but terminal panicle it is present at top of the plant this male flowers they are born in a cluster on top end of the stem as a terminal panicle and female flowers they are born inside the end cobs cobs means you know they are female reproductive structures in the maize crop they develop from nodes on the stem this tassel it is present on the top side of plant at the end but female uh, inflorescence they are present on both sides of the stem <clears throat> and maize generally it requires considerable warmth and the moisture from germination to flowering most suitable temperature for germination of maize crop is 21 degrees centigrade and for growth most suitable and optimum temperature is 32 degrees centigrade in this crop production uh, you should remember all these points means every crop is having a suitable temperature for germination suitable temperature for growth so you should remember uh, all these points and this high temperature if high temperature prevails at flowering stage it damages the foliage foliage means leaf production it damages the leaves after that it desiccates the pollen that means it interferes with the pollination of maize crop which leads to poor grain filling so high uh, high temperature should not be present at flowering stage and optimum uh, temperature should be present and uh, this one more thing is this maize crop is highly susceptible to frost frost happens because of chilling temperatures especially in north india this maize crop it is highly susceptible to frost and in kharif season mainly maize is grown as rain fed crop uh, rain fed crop means it depends upon only rainfall for uh, moisture and in rabi winter and summer seasons winter is nothing but rabi season in win uh, winter and summer seasons it depends upon irrigation that's why it is grown as irrigated crop yield of winter maize is always 1.5 to 2 times higher compared to rainy season crop rainy season means kharif season winter season means rabi season so we have discussed earlier this rabi maize will produce high yield compared to rain uh, kharif season because kharif season rainfall is unpredictable and uh, this maize it is grown as rain fed crop so sometimes high rainfall happen sometimes uh, rainfall ha uh, will happen not at all but rabi season uh, climate will be uniform and you some more uniform temperatures will be present that's right and the incidence of pests and diseases will be less in the rabi season compared to kharif season that's why you love wind, uh, winter maize is around two times higher compared to kharif season but in winter season the sowing should be done in the november that is also most probably in the first fortnight that means first four, uh, 15 days sowing should be completed if the sowing is delayed suppose if we grow the maize crop in december we know in december january this very low temperatures will prevail in north india so this maize crop will be damaged by frost mainly the seedlings seedlings stage they will be damaged because of this frost so sowing should not be delayed it should be uh, sown in the first fortnight of november means uh, in the uh, up to november 15 Maize requires around 500 to 800 mm of water. From moisture and nutrients point of view, period between tasseling and silking uh, growth stage is very critical. Uh, very critical. So means around 50 to 65 days after sowing, that growth stage is very critical. So at that growth stage, we should meet an optimum moisture and nutrient availability should high. If uh, either less amount is present or uh, nutrient availability is not there that means it will impact the yield and yield will be reduced severely severe, severely here we can see in this table seed rate and spacing of different types of corns is first one is normal maize it is uh, grown for grain purpose 
seed rate of composite varieties is around 15 to 20 kg per hectare per hybrid seed is 25 kg per hectare nowadays farmers are entirely growing this hybrids only with, because they are high yielding and spacing forward is 16 to 20 cm so plant population is around 83000 plants per hectare excuse me and sir seed rate of seed sir uh, please tell the difference between these two composite and hybrid hybrids means uh, they are produced through breeding means uh, we know they are produced by private companies because suppose one variety is there uh, it is tolerate uh, it can tolerate moisture uh, low moisture conditions also one variety is there uh, it is high yielding but uh, very sensitive to this low moisture so they will incorporate the gene from one variety to second variety means into one crop and they will produce the hybrid means it is produced by breeding program composites are uh, nothing but normal varieties means uh, initially farmers used to grow far, uh, composite varieties only they are very means compared to hybrids they are low yielding and they are susceptible to diseases and pests also and this sweet corn uh, Seed rate is eight kg per hectare, and the spacing followed is seventy five into twenty five, or seventy five into thirty. Plant population it varies from forty four thousand to fifty three thousand, and baby corn seed rate is twenty five kg per hectare. Spacing followed is sixteen uh, to twenty or sixteen to fifteen, just like normal maize. It is also sixteen to twenty. For normal maize, uh, spacing you remember sixteen to twenty. And plant population it varies from eighty three thousand to one lakh eleven thousand. Popcorn seed rate is twelve kg per hectare, and spacing is also sixteen to twenty. And plant population is eighty three thousand. Fodder maize seed rate is fifty kg per hectare, and spacing forward is thirteen to ten. And plant population is three thousand and thirty three plants per hectare. You see, compared to normal maize. Fodder maize seed rate is high and the spacing is very low. In any type of crop, suppose one crop is there, it is uh, one variety is there, it is growing for grain purpose. One uh, and another variety is there, it is growing for fodder purpose. This fodder variety will always have a high seed rate and uh, less spacing, so that we can accommodate more plants per hectare. Because if we are growing a crop for fodder purpose. We want more dry, uh, dry matter production. That means we want more leaves production. So we want to accommodate more number of plants per hectare. That means we want quantity. But if we are growing, uh, growing for grain purpose, optimum number of plants should be present such that no competition between the plants should be present. Means competition should be absent among the plants so that we can get quality yield. Means we want high yield as well as with quality also. That's why we are going for uh, growing for main purpose. Spacing and plant population it should be optimum. But if we are growing for fodder purpose, uh, we want more amount of dry matter production. So we want more number of plants per hectare. And water management, as we discussed, it is sensitive to both moisture stress and excessive moisture. Excessive moisture Moisture is nothing but water loving conditions. So, both the type of stresses uh, we should avoid. These both the type of stresses uh, during growth. So, we should regulate irrigation according to the requirement. Ensure optimum moisture availability during the most critical phase. So, 45 to 65 days after sowing, at this stage, optimum moisture should be present. Otherwise, yield will be reduced considerably. Here we can see four growth stages. First one is germination and establishment phase, one to fourteen days after sowing. Vegetative phase, fifteen to thirty-nine days. Flowering phase, forty to sixty-five days. Maturity, sixty-six to ninety-five days. In all these growth stages, we should irrigate the crop at least once. That means in germ during first phase, we should irrigate the crop at least once. During the second phase, we should irrigate the crops at least once. So minimum four irrigations should be given during crop period, 
so that we can get optimum yield. In seedling, uh, knee high. Knee high means it comes around 30 to 35 days. It is a wasted stage. In seedling, knee high flowering grain filling. All these four growth stages, they are most sensitive stages for moisture stress. If these are affected by moisture stress, yield will be reduced. So irrigation should be ensured at all these stages. For winter maize, means rabi maize, soil should be kept wet with frequent light irrigations. So we can protect the crop from low temperatures and frost injury. And crop, it should not be subjected to moisture stress at flowering stage also. So we have discussed earlier, high temperature should not prevail at flowering stage because it interferes with poll pollination and it leads to poor grain filling. So at flowering stage, moisture stress also, it should not be present. It also leads to the desiccation of pollen and poor grain filling which ultimately reduce the yield weed management weeds must be controlled during the initial four to six weeks after that canopy develops canopy is nothing but uh, foliage of maize after that uh, canopy develops which is thick enough to compete with the weeds it smothers the weeds so first of one month or one and a half month, we should take care of the uh, weeds very well. After that, that uh, uh, leaves will be produced very well, very well, and they can complete the weeds for uh, nutrients and moisture. Here, one cultural operation is there, hallowing. It is uh, followed in Western Himalayan zone. A hallowing means uh, plugging of standing crop at plugging in the standing crop at 20 to 25 days after sowing to control the weed population and for earthing up of plants. So weeds, they will be removed and it also leads to earthing up of plants. Earthing, the, earthing up is nothing but while doing plowing, it adds uh, some amount of soil to the base of plant or it makes the base of plant stronger so that a lodging won't happen. And this plowing, it also leads to the formation of furrows between the plants, which retains the rainwater. That means conservation of this rainwater and it helps the crop during drought. So this hallowing, it is having multiple uses. It controls the weed population. It also helpful for, it also does the thing up of plants and it also protects the crop from drought through conservation of moisture. You know, atrazine and cymazine, these two are the most popular herbicides used in maize. One more thing uh, you should remember is first atrazine, it is mostly used in maize followed by cymazine. And in dryland areas, atrazine is used because this atrazine, it is around six times more water soluble compared to cymazine. So in dry soils, very less amount of moisture is present. If you go for application of cymazine, it is less water soluble that means uh, it won't reach the plants and uh, it can uh, it cannot show that much effect on weeds that's why we should go for atrazine which is more water soluble compared to cymazine in dry land areas here uh, apply atrazine at the rate of 0.25 kg per hectare as a pre-emergence herbicides after three to four five days after sowing using 500 liters of water per hectare followed by one hand weeding on 30 to 35 days after sowing. So first three to five days after sowing, we should go for apply, application of atrazine as a pre-emergency herbicide. After that, one hand weeding on 30 to 35 days after sowing with lab is sufficient. Or if labor are not available, we can go for application of atrazine as a pre-emergence herbicide followed by 2,4-D at 20 to 25 days after sowing as post-emergence herbicides. First atrazine pre-emergence herbicides followed by 2,4-D post-emergence herbicide. We should go for application of herbicide only when there is sufficient moisture in the soil so that uh, this herbicide will act eff effectively. And we should not disturb the soil after herbicide application because some herbicides, they, they lost into atmospheric volatilization. 
but if mage is uh, grown with uh, another pulse as an interpop that means suppose if mage is grown with either black gram or green gram you should not use atrazine because atrazine it kills the broad leaf weeds and these pulses they are also broad leaf so it might kill the pulses also so in a maize plus pulse intercropping system atrazine and cymazine should be avoided instead of this pendimethalin can be used as a free amogen herbicide and next one is uh, nutrient management maize is an exhaustive crop exhaustive crop means it requires uh, so many so much amount of nutrients like uh, it is a heavy feeder and it requires balanced uh, supply of nitrogen phosphorus potassium as well as zinc not only maize ab dekhiye matlab har crop ko balance fertilization hi chahiye lekin zyada kisanon ne sirf npk mein dhyan dete hain aur zinc boron iron ko ignore karte kyunki wo micronutrients hai lekin hamesha npk saath zinc boron iron wo bhi kaat dalna padega taki wo balance fertilization rahega and especially hybrids of maize they are very responsive to external supply of nutrients external supply means application of nutrients through fertilizers indigenous supply means that is the soil inherent capacity means external supply means we are applying the fertilizers uh, we are applying the new nutrients with the help of fertilizers indigenous supply means generally plant will uptake nutrients from soil that is indigenous supply and recommended dose for irrigated timely sown maize crop is 120 plus 60 plus 30 npk per hectare and one third of nitrogen full dose of phosphorus and potassium they should be applied at the time of sowing and remaining amount of nitrogen in the remaining amount one half should be applied at knee high stage one half should be applied at pre tasseling stage that means knee high means around 30 days of sowing pre tasseling means around 45 to 50 days after sowing excuse me sir deficiency is there in maize crop zinc uh, deficiency yes. sir ek uh, query thi jaise aapne bola ki 120 120 mein se 1/3 split karna hai dose yes 120 like 60 uh, ha like like 30 30 like 40 40 40 40 first 40 okay, should okay. be applied at sir are you are not audible sir like 40 40 in which stage first 40 should be applied at the time of sowing okay next uh, 80 kgs are remaining that means again 40 it should be applied at the time of knee high and next uh, one third that means 40 it should uh, be applied at pre tasseling stage okay sir thank you and in some areas it may uh, farmers are applying 150 kg of nitrogen also it depends upon this uh, soil and climatic conditions and zinc deficiency it leads to white bud in this deficiency plant remains stunted and short in the nodes band of white or yellow tissue with reddish veins it appears on each side of midrib and this on each side of midrib this uh, white band or yellow band will form but midrib and plant margins they remain green in color and the remedy is application of zinc sulfate uh, at the rate of 25 kg per hectare at the time of sowing if we didn't apply this zinc sulfate at the time of sowing we can go for foliar spray of 0.5 percentage zinc sulfate at critical stages that means when our this zinc deficiency is visible we can go for immediate application of foliar spray one more important aspect is quality protein maize as we know normal maize it is uh, poor in lysine and tryptophan but this quality protein maize it is developed by scientists by incorporating opac2 genes so it is having high content of lysine and tryptophan both are essential amino acids plus it is having low content of leucine and isoleucine this leucine and isoleucine are also amino acids but they should be present in low because if they are present in high doses they are harmful for our human body means uh, they may interfere with uh, our digestive system 
and uh, other uh, nervous system so this leucine and isoleucine they should be present in low content next one is baby corn baby corn nowadays it is getting famous even curry is also they are being prepared with baby corn it is a young finger like unfertilized crop you remember baby corn is a unfertilized crop normalize it is a fertilized crop with 1 to 3 cm emerged silk generally baby corn it is harvested within 1 to 3 days of silk emergence silk generally it forms around 60 to 65 days after sowing after 1 to 3 days of silk emergence baby corn should be harvested most preferred color of baby corn is creamy to light yellow and this baby corn it is one of the richest source of phosphorus it is highly nutritious and sweet corn it is a we know it is a rich source of energy vitamin c vitamin e it is early in maturity and it should be harvested around 70 to 75 days after sowing one important thing is so in cereals that milking stage will be there after flowering stage milking stage will come that means generally grains they will be filled with liquid white color uh, liquid type fluid after that dove stage will come dove stage is nothing but hardening of that liquid that means hardening of grain but this wheat corn it should be harvested during that milking stage only it means before hardening it should be harvested because that time sugar content is high in that grain if it is being delayed or if it is harvested in dove stage that sugar content it will be reduced and taste of sweet corn it is uh, will be reduced so it should be harvested around 70 to 75 days after you know, sowing and at harvesting stage moisture content in grain should be around 70 percent is and sugar content it varies from 11 to 20 percent is and after harvesting that means after picking up these cobs it should not be exposed to high temperature means after harvesting this grain cobs of uh, green cobs of sweet corn they should not be exposed to high temperature if they are exposed to high temperature it leads to loss in flavor and taste will be reduced so after harvesting they should be immediately transferred to cold storage and one important point is this gm crops you know genetically modified crops crops with highest area under gm crops in the world is first one is soya bean followed by maize followed by cotton and one important aspect uh, variety is also there high oil maize generally maize consists of 4 percent is oil and researchers have developed high oil maize it consists of around 6 percent is oil in this table you can see maize type uh, and the different varieties and the hybrids first one is quality protein maize hqpm1 hqpm5 and all shiktiman series they all belongs to quality protein maize next one is baby corn baby corn varieties are hm4 prakash vl baby corn one and priya madri win orange all they are the varieties of sweet corn jawahar amber pearl and vl popcorn they are varieties of popcorn and african doll j1006 chari series they all belongs to fodder maize in this table we can see the recently released bio fortified varieties they are developed by icr here we can see uh, first rice varieties cr dan 310 it is rich in high protein it is rich in protein generally we know rice is poor in protein this cr dan 310 it is rich in protein developed by national rice research institute katak drr dan 45 drr dan 49 both are rich in zinc both are developed by indian institute of rice research hyderabad next wheat varieties wb02 it is rich in zinc and iron it is developed by indian institute of wheat and barley research karnal excuse and me sir SP... sir yes. what is polished grain polished grain is nothing but milled grain first uh, generally rice grain will be present after that we will do hulling hulling means husk will be removed after that brown rice will remove uh, will remain brown rice it is highly nutritious 
we will send that ground rice into rice mills in rice mills they will do polishing that means they will remove top bran and endosperm ellur uh, bran ellulan uh, elluran layer they will be removed that means polished rice will come polished rice is white in color but it is very low in these vitamins and minerals that's why uh, normally diabetes patients they will prefer brown rice because it is rich in vitamins and minerals but uh, if we do polish that brown rice all the vitamins and minerals they will be gone with that bran and elluron layer and uh, hpbw01 it is rich in iron and zinc it is developed by uh, pa ludhiana and pusa tejas pusa ujala both are developed by ira regional station indore both are rich in protein iron and zinc and mscs4028 it is rich in protein and zinc it is developed by agriculture research station pune coming to maize varieties we know maize generally it is poor in tryptophan and lysine all this posa vivek qbm9 improved posa hm4 improved posa hm8 improved posa hm9 improved all these varieties are developed by iri new delhi all these varieties are rich in uh, tryptophan and lysine here in this uh, table you, you just remember variety and uh, they are developed by which institute and in which content they are rich in suppose cr dan 310 it is rich in protein and developed by nrri national rice research institute katak no need of remembering this uh, percentage or contents thank you excuse me sir yes sir uh, at present in simazin they both are used for grassy weeds At present in Simazin, are they both used for grassy weeds? Uh, at present in Simazin, generally they are effective against grasses and some types of broadleaf weeds also. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, and sir, in Simazin, it generally required less water. Ah, uh, come. No, no. At present is more water soluble. Means in less amount of water also will be. More soluble, so atrazine requires less amount of water compared to cymazine. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Sir, can you share YouTube link, sir, in WhatsApp group? Ah, okay, okay. I will share in the WhatsApp group. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir, variety. What are these? Jena, who, 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 who? नया वाला वेडी या हेलो सर जो एग्जाम में हर 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 को याद नहीं करेंगे ना मैच के जो वेराइटी है जो आ सकता है एग्जाम में सिर्फ ये पूछता है कि मतलब रिसेंटली रिलीज हुआ है जैसे मतलब मान लो इस साल क्या रिलीज हुआ या वैसा रिलीज हुए मतलब वो हम शेयर करेंगे मतलब ये सब क्लास होने के बाद वो जो करंट अफेयर्स होगा ना वो आपके साथ हम शेयर करेंगे रिसेंटली रिलीज वेराइटीज जो मतलब नीम रोशन ये किताब में दिया है कि सिर्फ पुराना वेराइटीज वो तो एग्जाम में नहीं पूछेगा आजकल तो सिर्फ नया वेराइटीज ही पूछ रहा है वो मतलब ये क्लासेस खत्म होने के बाद हम शेयर करेंगे वो वेराइटीज Released by ICR. Newly and sir, uh, please share the data also because we require the present uh -huh. data. Present uh, data yeah, and data sure. of uh, three four years. It is essential. Uh, okay, we'll sir. That answer will share. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. The class was very very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.